Hi guys, so I normally don't do this because I don't spend that kind of energy on New Jersey. Uh, my regular Spotify podcast co-host, Lindsay, the housewife historian. This is actually really her thing and she really gets into it. And, you know, I am really not into New Jersey. Like I'm more into Salt Lake City, but I am from New York. A lot of these lawsuits are from New York and my brother, if you guys follow me like that, then you guys already know my brother is a lieutenant in the NYPD. Besides from that, if you guys also follow me, then you also know that I worked in corporate America for six years. And while New York City is a very big metropolis city, if you belong to a certain inner circle then you basically know everybody that runs in that circle. Now, before I get into this lawsuit, and guys, I have this big giddy smile on my face because I don't know if this is considered breaking news or what, but do with it what you will. It is not a secret. I don't know if maybe whoever has been leaking to the press was hoping it is a secret, but it really isn't. Now, a lot of people don't consider lawyers to be part of that law enforcement world. What did I find out, right? Well, let's start from the beginning. First of all, for those of you who are not from New York City, let me explain the New York City court system to you. In New York City, Manhattan is New York County. So when you guys saw this lawsuit, a civil lawsuit, by the way, and it said New York Supreme Court, those that are Teresa Judice haters basically wet their pants thinking, oh my God, this is the Supreme Court of the state of New York, where it would sound like that, right? But that's because you're not a New Yorker. So in New York, Manhattan is New York County. Brooklyn is Kings County. And you know, it's confusing. I don't know why they don't call Brooklyn just Brooklyn instead of Kings County. And I don't know why they don't call Manhattan Manhattan instead of just New York County. But that's the way it goes. And in New York City, it's county name Supreme Court. So, for example, if you live in Long Island, then you either live in Nassau County or you live in Suffolk County. And your county court would be called Nassau County Supreme Court. Now, if you live in Brooklyn, your county court would be called Kings County Supreme Court. If you live in Manhattan, your county court would be called the New York Supreme Court. If this does not have the same equivalence of another state's Supreme Court. When you hear Supreme Court, you actually think of, okay, that is the highest level of court in that state. But in New York, the highest level of the state court is the New York Appellate Court. So your trial court, your county court, if you want to sue somebody, if you want to get a divorce, if you want to go and like, I don't know, like, even though it says New York Supreme Court, that is the New York County, which is Manhattan, that is the Manhattan County Court, that is trial court, and the reason why people say is trial court is, is because that's usually where, you know, you have your trials at. You could either have a jury trial or you could have a bench trial. If you have a bench trial, then a judge or a magistrate hears your case and instead of a group of your peers deciding on the outcome, a judge or a magistrate decides on the outcome. Now, if you are not happy with that outcome, if you are not happy with that decision, then you can appeal it to the appellate court, which is the equivalent of other states' Supreme Court. And guys, I mean, if you want to take the time to actually understand it, use Wikipedia. It breaks it down for you if you actually understand the terminology, but I'm assuming most don't. And now, if you are not satisfied with the New York Appellate Court's decision, your next and final option is to appeal it to the United States Supreme Court. The United States Supreme Court hear very limited cases each year, and the cases that they do hear are cases that deals with constitutional rights. But 
that's not what I'm here to talk to you guys about. What I'm here to talk to you guys about is this lawsuit. So the lawsuit is really centered around this one person named Danielle Rosenberg. Why is she important? I'm going to get into that. There is this attorney. His name is Kevin Scott Johnson. Kevin Scott Johnson has not been practicing law for that long. Kevin Scott Johnson has only been practicing law for 10 years. Danielle Rosenberg has been practicing law for about 23 years. She is licensed to practice in New York and in Florida. There is also this man called Abraham Haram. Am I pronouncing his name correctly? No. Hamra? I... Is a Middle Eastern last name, so I'm just going to call him Abraham. Abraham is a Syrian refugee of Jewish ethnicity. This Abraham was a partner with two other lawyers in a law firm. Abraham decided to leave that law firm and go be a partner in a bigger firm. Now, much like when a doctor retires and sells his practice or whatever, you know, sometimes the clients go to the new person, to the new doctor. The law firm that he had, he actually set it up in 2014, so a very new business. He didn't get his law license until 2013. He went to Pace University. He got his law degree in 2013, which is also the same year that's uh Kevin Scott Johnson got his law license, and I don't know the exact date, he decided to sell his law firm. Maybe he wasn't doing so good, or maybe he just felt he could get better pay at a more established law firm, a law firm that's been around since 1965. Now, why did this matter, you say? Okay. And somebody else who I noticed very shortly, very briefly, in 2023, registered with the state of New York as having worked in that law firm with that address is Danielle Rosenberg. Now, when I was wondering about this so-called email that Bo Dito allegedly, mistakenly, accidentally sent to Kevin Johnson that was meant for Danielle Rosenberg, it really didn't make sense, especially considering the fact that Kevin Johnson testified in Vanessa's TRO hearing in the state of New Jersey. He was not found to be credible. She did not get her restraining order, and it was dismissed. And when it was dismissed, the judge's opinion was that Vanessa was had a weird obsession with the Real Housewives of New Jersey. I mean, guys, whatever publication you like to read, whether it's page six, whether it's U.S. Sun, whether it's People Magazine, whether it's OK Magazine, whether it's Us Weekly, go Google it, go read it, go read it in quotes to hear what the judge said when it was dismissed. So then I'm thinking, well, that really doesn't make sense. Why would Bodito accidentally send a message to this Kevin person if it was meant to be sent to Danielle Rosenberg? Because Doug Anton was Vanessa's lawyer. So why would anybody be sending you, Kevin, information when Doug Anton was Vanessa's lawyer? But you know what I say? Everybody knows everybody, right? And if you run in that legal circle, you also know everybody. And you see certain lawyers at these galas, at these events, at these balls. And then you also find people who know people. And so Danielle Rosenberg worked. She had an overlapping registration with this Abraham lawyer in 2023, last year, briefly. Danielle actually ended up opening her own practice. Now, 
Danielle is actually out in Nassau County. She's in Williston Park somewhere. This Kevin Johnson guy is in Great Neck, which is also in Nassau County. I mean, guys, if you guys are in from New York, I might as well be telling you, you know, this is Sesame Street because none of these names would mean anything to you. But they both basically work in the same area. So she is out in Williston Park, Nassau County, Long Island. He is out in Great Neck, Nassau County, Long Island. And their connection is this Abraham guy. Abraham no longer has whatever, you know, law group he had. He had it very briefly, and then he sold it. And when you sell something like that, basically what you're selling is files. You're selling the files of your clients. Now, what happens when you get your files from all these people? Oh, my goodness. I wonder if maybe the New Jersey judge didn't find Kevin credible because of this overlapping of working as associates, as partners, as whatever, in the same law firm, law group. Is that why they didn't find you credible, Kevin Johnson? But we'll see. So this is a summons to appear in court to answer the penitition. And usually what happens with this is that the other side of the party, they could file a petition to dismiss or whatever. But on the first day of hearing, you're basically just going into court for the judge to say what the hell's going on. That calendar is actually months in advance. That first court appearance is a summons just to appear in court to answer the petition. So again, you know, the other side could file a petition to dismiss. And if they do, then the judge will hear the arguments on the merits of the case. If the judge decide that there is enough to proceed with a trial, then they will then the judge will not dismiss the case and it will be scheduled for trial. But even before it is scheduled for trial, they will want decides to talk, to come to a settlement, to whatever. If they cannot come to a settlement agreement and a trial is set on the court's calendar, then each team has to give each other discovery, which is evidence that they have so that the other side, both sides, can offer rebuttals and do questions and whatever else. Now, this is obviously being leaked by someone. I'm guessing Kevin Johnson is the one who's leaking it. Look, it's all information that you could look online if you know how to look for it. I mean, I didn't even have to hack into any system or call Boldito or anything. This is legit stuff that you could find online. And again, these same people at charity events, at galas, at balls, at annual whatever the hell, fundraising for this and that and the other, and um, it's a small circle in New York City. So this is really interesting. I actually don't think Kevin Johnson is going to win. Um, I will say, though, people in New York know who Bo Dito is, and especially in Manhattan. And investigating somebody is not illegal. Why would Bodito be messaging you accidentally, Kevin Johnson, considering the fact that you were not Vanessa's lawyer? Doug Anton was Vanessa's lawyer. But it is interesting that you and Danielle Rosenberg worked at the same law firm. And Something else that I noticed about Kevin Johnson when I was looking him up is that last year, Kevin Johnson had a lot of filings that was rejected by the New York court system. It was rejected for errors like not filing the paperwork correctly. And it appears that Kevin Johnson had a lot of his court filings rejected for Errors that a paralegal would know, errors that somebody who is an administrative assistant would have realized. Essentially, his paperwork was rejected because he did not file it correctly. He did not list the name of who the person was that was served. He did not fill out the correct forms. And guys, I'm not talking about like 10 years ago when he first started practicing law. 
these files are from July 2023, last summer. 